amazing recipe. I am so excited yet another day because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how easy it is to make delicious cabbage. This cabbage right here is really old school. It's going to really take you back. It's so easy to make. doesn't require a lot of ingredients and you know, Make a Jeannie Young style, hands down, it's going to be so tasty. Y'all never had my cabbage before. Better make you some. Here are the lovely ingredients you're going to need. First thing that you're going to need, get you some nice fresh cabbage. Okay, so I have some beautiful organic cabbage. Okay, you can, any kind of cabbage. Okay, it doesn't have to be organic, but I'm just telling you that it's organic. Okay, you're going to need some. Okay, and I typically like to use two heads because we like to have this for leftovers. It gets better the next day. And then also you're gonna need some meat. Decide what kind of meat you like. Now listen here, if you're a person that doesn't eat pork, no worries. You can always use turkey. You can always use chicken. Like have fun with the ingredients, okay? You can still make this recipe, okay? You could use a beef. I'm using some bacon. And then I'm also gonna use some Eckford smoked sausage, okay? And then, um, we are going to use some Yukon Gold baby potatoes, and then also we have a couple of spices so we can make this thing taste good. Okay, so right here we have some garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper, and then we have some Sazon Complete. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yeah, so tasty recipe. I couldn't be more excited to share with you all how easy it is to make cabbage. I mean, come on now. Everybody out there doesn't know how to make cabbage taste delicious. You can fry it, you can steam it. There's so many different ways you could do it. You could put corned beef in it. And I, I, I love, love, love the cabbage that I make that has the corned beef in it. Oh my goodness, it is so good. Okay, so now, but I also love this one because this one takes me back to when I was a little girl, when you used to have the cabbage with the potatoes in it and also that has the meat. And when I was younger, my dad would always make cabbage over rice. So when he plated our cabbage up, we would have rice underneath the cabbage and so that's what we're gonna do today. So I have some water boiling for my rice as well. Wash your veggies off. I was hoping that I caught it. <laughs> I, when I went like this, I'm like, you better catch it. Okay, so now, make sure you wash your veggies off. You, like, you have to. You want to wash off those nasty pesticides, and again, you never know who's handled your veggies in the supermarket. So we're just going to do a number just like this. Okay? Simple, right? I love this here potato. The skin is amazing. It's nice and soft, and um, it, it has a lot of nutrients. Now, when it comes to the red potatoes, I'm really not a fan of it. I will use the red potatoes for like a, um, uh, a potato salad sometimes, but this is the one that's my go-to when I think of cabbage. Now, I will use an Idaho potato if that's all I have, you know. But if you can find these, go ahead and use them. So you see that I'm just slicing them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash them again and I'm gonna set them in a cold ice water bath while we cut up all the other vegetables. When I come back, we'll get started cutting up everything, get that part done and out the way. So now what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and take this time and talk about the smoked sausage. Now, if you want to, you can take these sausages and you can get a really beautiful golden brown color onto them and you know get them nice and cooked and then throw them into your cabbage. Now, I do that sometimes, but then I also like to do this. I feel like when you do it this way, when you just chop it up this way and throw it in without sauteing it, guess what I feel like? I feel like you get more flavor because um, I feel like the flavor is extracted from this. When you put it raw like this into your cabbage, I feel like you get more flavor versus cooking this, getting a golden brown onto it and all of your juices come out into your pan, right? and then you put it into your cabbage. Now, you can always take that beautiful oil. Absolutely, you can. Take that oil that you fried the sausage in and put it, you know, and cook your uh, cabbage in it and you'll have amazing flavor. But I, I tend to like to go this way without um, sauteing these. Just put them in the cabbage this way. So now, as far as when it comes to our bacon, we're gonna cook the bacon and we are gonna put some of that bacon grease into our cabbage and it's just really gonna take the flavor Overboard. Now that I'm almost done cutting up our sausage, and I always like to use two of them, um, 
I'm gonna cut the bacon off camera, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you guys how I like to chop up my cabbage. Let's cut some cabbage. All right, so we're just, you need a little bit of elbows, elbow grease to do this. You know, and sometimes it's okay to ask someone, hey, can you help me cut this cabbage? Because sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. You know, so we're gonna slice it just like so. And then right here where the core is, we're gonna cut that core out. And we're able to do that by just making a triangle cut and then pulling that part off. I love when I can find cabbage that has the green part attached. Because now you will, of course, you will um, take off any bad leaves. Let me fix this, this thing is driving me crazy there it goes so now if I can find a cabbage that has that really dark leaf on the top I love it but of course like I said you want to take off any dead leaves or any leaves that don't look right but this is how I like to do it you can cut big slices big chunks cut it how you want but this is just how I like to do mine cabbage was a staple at my house when I was growing up and I totally adored it. Now my dad would put a pinch of sugar in his cabbage and I loved it. And he would also put the bacon in raw into the cabbage. And you know, he didn't fry it before he made the cabbage, but it was always delicious, you hear me? So now I'm gonna put the cabbage into here because this is such a big walk. But what I do want to do is I want to make sure that I wash off the cabbage a second time now that it's cut. That way you can make sure any sand or any little critters that might be in there, you want to wash all of that away. Okay, so that's how I like to cut that. I'm going to cut this other one. Well, let me show you how to cut the core. We're going to go ahead and do that triangle motion like I spoke of. I'm using a little bit of elbow grease. Look, you got the core. You got the core out. See that? And I could even cut a little bit more of the core off, but there's, there's really no reason, like relax, okay? <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna continue to do this. I'm gonna get our cabbage cut and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, so my cameraman had to go, but I'm gonna try my very best to give you all amazing views. So now, what we're gonna do next is we are going to slice our bacon just like so. And, you know, chop it as big or as small as you want. But like I said, what we are gonna do is we're gonna saute this until it gets nice, beautiful, and golden brown. And the bacon grease um, that we get from the bacon, we're gonna pour some of it, some of it, not all of it, into our cabbage. Now, I'm, I'm one of the people that, when I make cabbage, I like to have like a cabbage broth. It is so delicious. It's kind of like when you have uh, greens and you have that nice pot liquor. Well, pot liquor is made with cabbage as well, as long as you use like a chicken broth or a water, okay, when you're cooking your cabbage. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and get this bacon turned on just like so. I wanna wash my board, wash my hands up, and then I'm gonna come back, we're gonna put everything together and we're gonna have some amazing Gina Young style, old school cabbage. Make you so. I'm gonna try my best to give you guys some amazing views so you can still see things even though my cameraman is not here right now. Okay, look at that. In we go with the rice. And what I like to do is I like to boil my water, salt my water, cook the rice for 11 minutes and every time it turns out perfectly al dente, which is chewy to the tube, never mushy, nice and fluffy every time. Our, ba our bacon is just getting ready to start cooking and uh, it, it's gonna take a little minute for the pan to start to heat up. Meanwhile, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about our cabbage that's over there. I did put about this much water into the pan after washing it, okay? Now you could use a chicken broth if you like. Like I said, I like to have some type of cabbage broth. It really brings it to life. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that cabbage over here. We're gonna get it nice and seasoned. Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and get this beautiful cabbage nice and seasoned. And I did decide that we were gonna go ahead and put a couple of pinches of sugar in. Now, what I like to do when I'm making collard greens or I'm making cabbages, I like to season it a couple of times because you always want to season it, taste it, season it, taste it. If you need more, add more, okay? Don't be afraid to season. Now, this is the sugar that we're doing. We're gonna do two pinches. 
and I might put more, you know. But am I aiming for a sweet taste? No, I'm not. I'm aiming for umami flavor. It's going to make them say, mmm, mommy, where'd you get that recipe from? Okay, so this right here is garlic. Don't be afraid with the garlic. Like, you do some garlic. And we're also going to add another addition, which is red pepper flakes, but I'm not going to put enough in there to burn anybody's socks off, you know? You, you want to taste a little bit of that uh, heat in the back of the palate, but not too much, you know? So we're going to go in with some onion powder. Onion powder is everything and some, right? So get you some in there. Today I'm not going to be using fresh onions. A lot of times when you see me make a cabbage, I'll use fresh onions. Not today. I just didn't want to today. But the onion powder, definitely need it. Okay, that's the sazon complete. We are going to put some salt in, but we're going to, not, not too much. You know, not too much. We'll get crazy with it. All right. Like I said, several times we're going to go in, taste it, and re-season. Okay, so our bacon is smelling absolutely amazing. I want to check in over here. Grab a handy dandy fork, and we're going to give our bacon a nice stir around. It's starting to let off some beautiful oil. Like I told you all, don't use all of this oil. Use a little bit. A little bit of this bacon grease is going to really give you an amazing flavor. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and put this on the stove behind me. And then we're going to start to add in some of our other ingredients. Well, I tell you what, let's do it now. Go ahead and add in some of your bell peppers. Okay? I, I'm just getting so excited. Add in some of your sausage. Okay? And then we are left with some sausage and we're left with bell pepper. But I'll, I'll tell you what we're going to do with it. Relax. Okay? But we're not going to add in the potatoes just yet. And I know so many people say, why do you call it potatoes? Well, I, I don't know. I say potatoes that way. I know it's pronounced with a P and it's spelled with a P, but if I say it that way, some of you guys just need to relax. You know, everybody pronounces things a little different. Okay, so now let's get this on the stove. Be right back. Now we're getting some beautiful color and it smells so good. I tell you one thing, like I... Bacon is a guilty pleasure of mine, especially if it's sugared. It has to be Sugardale bacon. Oh my goodness, I love it. And when I'm cooking it, I can't stop but to put my hand in and keep tasting it until practically all of it is gone. But I'm going to refrain today from doing that, even though I want to. And I did already taste like two pieces that were golden brown. <laughs> So now we're still waiting on that cabbage to kind of cook down a while. It does take a while, but yet I, I have the bacon and I chose to take out a little bit of the oil. Look how much oil, about that much, okay? The rest of the oil, um, you know, we're not gonna use it. We'll save that for something else. So we have the bacon in here, and some of you may wonder, how come you're not stirring it around? Well, what I wanna do is I want it to cook down a little bit. That way it doesn't go flying out the pan. So once it cooked down, we'll come back and we'll stir it around just like so and let it cook for a little bit. And one thing that I love about cabbage is it does not take forever in a day to cook. Let's take a look over here at our rice. The rice is done. So we're gonna get that out, get it nice and buttered with some sweet cream butter, and then we're gonna put a little parsley in it to make it nice and beautiful. I'm gonna tell you the perfect time that we need to put the potatoes in. How about we go ahead and mix up some nice cornbread? Like you can't, you can't have cabbage at the Young's house without some nice cornbread. I should have used a bigger, bigger bowl, but guess what? We're gonna work our way through it, you know? And then I have one of my favorite skillets. You can kind of see it right there that I like to throw in the oven. I've oiled it with a little bit of vegetable oil and we're gonna put the cornbread right in that skillet. That skillet makes some nice cornbread, you hear me? So this cornbread has a little bit of sweetness because I added a little bit of sugar in it, okay? And this will come out and I'll show you how beautiful and fluffy it is. Our cabbage has cooked down a nice amount. Let's go ahead and give it a nice stir around. Oh yeah, my goodness, you would not believe the smell that's coming out of this house. There are some people that think the cabbage smells horrible. I'm not one of those people. And when I make my cabbage, it doesn't stink. <laughs> it doesn't, it smells good. Like, it smells good. It smells like I'm making a gourmet dinner here, you know? All right, look at that. All right, so now we're able to get those spices and, you know, the bacon, the bacon grease. 
the uh, sausage and bell peppers all mixed in just like so. And we're gonna continue to let it cook down for a little bit and then we'll go in where we'll taste the broth and we'll see what it tastes like. If we need more seasoning, we'll add more seasoning. Cornbread in the oven, rice, done. So now that our cabbage is half the way cooked, go ahead and put these gorgeous potatoes in. All right, just like so, and just kind of nestle them into that gorgeous broth there. You know, I really don't like to put too many potatoes into my um, cabbage, but you do want it in there because everybody wants potatoes in their cabbage, you know. So just, you know, put as much as you like or as least as you like. I'll probably put about maybe two more and then we'll set, we're set. Look at that. You can cover it if you like, absolutely you could. But honestly, you don't have to. Now, when these uh, potatoes are done, the cabbage will be just about done as well. Look at this. And then here in a second, we'll taste that broth, see how much seasoning we need. Now would be the first time, or the perfect time, I must say, to get your kitchen in order. You got dishes, get those dishes done. So we've done the dishes, we have them drying, wiped off all the counters. I promise you, if you do this, you'll be stress-free when you are cooking. So I almost forgot about the cornbread. I got to putting clothes in the dryer, my goodness. And I thought, I have cornbread, I must take out of the oven. I ran and grabbed it and it was perfectly done. So I thank you Lord for that. Okay, so I'm just taking my stick, my stick of sweet cream butter and I'm just rubbing it. Oh my goodness, there is nothing like sweet cornbread with cabbage. Too young style. Make it so. Wee! Now I went in two extra times and re-seasoned and it tastes so good. Potatoes are fork tender and the cabbage is just right and it's not mushy. We got the rice that is perfectly done. And then also we have uh, beautiful cornbread. Listen here, everybody. If you all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know, tell the whole world about Jeannie Young, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Let's go ahead and say a quick prayer so you all can take a bite. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful meal in Jesus Christ's name and all your many, many blessings. Amen. Take a look at it, everybody. Jeannie Young style, old, old school cabbage and cornbread. And don't forget the rice. Jeannie Young style. Make you some. I'm going in, but we're going to make it quick because my battery is going to die. Come on. Oh, yes. My favorite mm, is hot. Please, please don't burn my mouth. Mm, mm hmm. Mm. There's just so much flavor. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. As always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm.